the the Cubs yeah. had a hundred and eight years yeah. that they had been reaching for this goal. Yeah. I mean, it was what nineteen oh eight was the last time that they won the World Series, and so it's yeah. twenty sixteen. A hundred and eight years. That's some people their entire lifetime that they went through. As Cubs fans, and they never saw them win. Yeah, they never saw them win at all. Yeah, die I hard. mean, like yeah. they were, and those Chicago fans are like serious. Oh, they're die hard. They're die hard. They're die hard. And so I was just thinking about like they had to finally bring together the perfect dream team, um, the the players, of course, some new, some veterans, and then they had to they had to get you know, of course, the owner. And then Theo Epstein, mm -hmm. who apparently, I was watching on ESPN today at the yeah. gym, that he has brought three teams um, to the World Series from, they went from like 100 losses to the World Series. So, yeah. I mean, he's an ace in your pocket right there. Yeah, he's a strategist. So, I mean, what an amazing yeah. um, dream team that yeah. they brought together. They all had this original dream that we want to go and win the World Series. And you know what? We got to bring the right players together. We got to do the right training. We got to all see it together. I love too how during the ninth inning when they had the um, the rain delay in the in the post game interviews, mm -hmm. they were talking about like, well, what did you guys talk about in the in the rain delay? And they were all just like, no, we've got this. We're doing this. This is what we've got to do. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to finish it off. Mm -hmm. Like everyone who talked about their discussion and even. Yeah. Um, I think Theo said he walked by and he was like, they were just so focused yeah. on finishing out their dream. And so it just inspired me that like, hey, tonight, let's talk about dreams. Let's talk about dreams in our relationship. Let's talk about, let's see, he says, uh, forget the Cubs. My motto is for life is dream bigger. That's right. Bigger. We want bigger dreams than even the World Series. That's right. I mean, I, I, I think it's a really good, I think it's a really good, um, just kind of analogy, just, just something we can all wrap our minds around and see that teamwork really does make the dream work. Yeah. And that, that was, and I love how you're not just talking about, you know, the, I mean, obviously on the team, there are different role players. And right. I, I know there was a 39 year old David Ross yeah, who gotcha. was a, who came in as a, as a, the second catcher in the game yeah. and he hit a home run yeah. and but every player on their roster besides some of the relief pitchers got to play like yeah. either pinch hit pinch ran something. something and so literally everybody got to contribute that's so rare and so fun and so um, everybody got to do their role but it took not just the doers not mm -hmm. just the players but it also took the organizers mm -hmm. the coaches the managers and then it also took the thinkers. Yeah. So that was the ownership, the front office, mm -hmm. and this Theo Epstein guy. Right. You know, with with some sort of like mad math that bought the. He brought. He was engineered the Boston Red Sox coming back, um, and then also the Cubs. I mean, that's just that's pretty that's awesome. Pretty wild. It's pretty awesome. Um, so so we'll kick us off, honey. What we're going to talk about? Um, how to dream together? Episode fifteen. Um, what's our outline going to look like? Well, first I just wanted to talk about, you know, what is a dream team? Mm -hmm. And when you think about it in terms of marriage, um, and of course we're looking at it from a spiritual perspective, um, from a biblical worldview, is that um, when God made Adam and he looked at Adam and he said, it's not good for him to be alone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to make him Amen. a helper yeah. for him. Yeah. And so God, you know, breathed life into Adam and then he fashioned, took from Adam. And he fashioned Eve and he brought them together mm -hmm. and he said, your dream right now is to glorify me mm -hmm. and to go and be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth and have dominion over it. Mm -hmm. And so to, to see their dream and to say, and for Adam to say like, Hey, I've got someone to help me in this, yeah. you know, is, Amen. is a great way for us to be able to look at our marriage and say, mm -hmm. God has brought us together. Mm -hmm. um, he said that. You know, later that he would, man, my phone, I didn't turn off the ringer. Sorry. Did that kill it? Is that, are y'all still on? Okay, good. I'm going to turn this ringer off real quick because that's donkey. Okay. I think that killed I, it. I killed it. I definitely killed it. Um, I'm coming back on. But anyway. Uh, we're still on with, yeah. with my phone. What I'm saying here is that 
God has a plan for marriages to be able to bring, to be able to bring a dream, to be able to birth a dream through two people. Um, and sometimes it's it's one spouse or the other's dream. Right. And sometimes it's a dream that you come up with together and say, yeah. like, as a couple, as a family, this is our dream. This right. is how we feel like God is is leading us and moving us um, to do big, hairy, audacious things. Mm. And so I just wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about how, you know, we um, need each other. Mm. You need me. Like, if you guys know Brandon, y'all know that he is a dreamer. He's a dreamer. <laughs> and, and, and for that reason, you need to pray for me. Um, but tonight we're going to talk a little bit about how to share your dreams with each other without being overwhelming. Um, I'd like to talk about how to hold and champion your spouse's dreams. And then I'd also like to talk about how together do you dream as a couple. And so those are three, just three major things that I'd like to... Um, I think everybody else can be thinking about the answers to those questions as well. And so be thinking about how would you answer that question and then maybe offer up some of your wisdom for the community here um, to, to, to kind of hear and we can all partake of, you know, so, so if, whether it's at work, whether it's at church, um, wh whatever, wherever, it's a nonprofit organization you're a part of, you're on the board of, or whether you're talking about in your home, which specifically is going to be the major, um, you know, example that we're using is, you know, what... What are the answers to those questions? Repeat them one more time for me. The first one is how to share your dream with your spouse okay. or your teammates. In a non-overwhelming way. In a non-overwhelming way. Okay. And that's especially good for big dreamers. That's, so I, that's, a, that's where I need to work. Um, okay. Ten four. Number two is how do you hold and or champion your spouse's dream? Okay. And I think that's important that's, for, for, that's, bo for both of yeah, us. Yeah, for both of us, but, but mostly me because yeah. I'm listening a lot. And, and, and then... How do you um, dream together as a couple right. in a healthy way? That's good. And so, um, well, would you mind real quick just moving yeah. that a little bit? We have our notes. I mean, you know, this isn't just off the cuff, but not not the light, babe, the thing. There you go. Oh. Is that better? Um, yeah, that that's worse? better. That's better. Okay. You know what's that? Sorry, we don't have all this stuff up in our head. We have four kids. We have to write notes yeah. down. But anyway, um, so, so let's just talk. Let's yeah. just talk about... You know, how do you, if you're a dreamer, how do you guys, how do you share your dreams with each other, with your spouse? Um, I know, like, some of these people, like Tyler and Crystal, I mean, you guys have had huge dreams. Let's move from Louisiana and start a church in Boston, Massachusetts. That's huge. That's a huge, kind of hairy, audacious dream. Like, kind of, how in the world? I remember meeting this couple um, during our pastor's training, our church planner's training, and just thinking like, how are they going to do that? Mm -hmm. Because the culture is so different and the people are so different and the spiritual climate is so different and, and they were young and like here they are doing it. I think they mm -hmm. just opened their second, their second campus. Mm -hmm. I and mean, they're knocking it out of the ballpark over there, over at, what's that, Fenway, I guess. Fenway ballpark, not, uh, she's not, not Wrigley. She's knocking it out of the ballpark with her, um, with her baseball analogies. Hey. Lefty, Southpaw. Um, but how do you share these dreams without overwhelming your spouse? So if so, yeah. just let me know. Um, put a one in the comments if you or your spouse are like big dreamers. Like you've you're either you're one just who always has these dreams. We could do this, and we could do this, or we could do this, or I think that God's showing me how to do this. Or maybe, maybe your spouse is. So just go ahead and put a one in there um, in the comments or just say, hey, me, or just say my spouse is or whatever. We just love to find out because... Who are the dreamers? Who, who are, are dreamers the dreamers? We want to know. So let me talk a little bit about, um, about communicating in a non-overwhelming way. And let me just first, full disclosure, just say, like, I have probably been the world's worst at this. Okay, if you know me and... Um, then you have probably experienced um, something that we like to set to call drinking from a fire, fire hydrant. hydrant. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like sometimes I just have so many things going on in my head, and it's like 
whatever for whatever reason, the way that I'm wired is like it's like I get up and I see the world from like a thirty thousand foot view, and so I see I see something over here, something over here. I like to see how all the every system is working together to make something happen. I like to see the strategy, and here's the thing. It, the, even the details don't overwhelm me. I love to zoom in and see the little detail of this and just kind of wonder at how that microcosm plays a role in this macro level uh, vision. And I just, me, not everyone is wired that way. And so I just assumed, you know, the, the whole idea of like, hey, don't cast your pearls before swine, you know. And so I always thought that that meant, okay, Keep your dream to yourself. So I, there's a lot of so dreamers out there. There's actually some good uh, Bible wisdom um, that can that can actually help you here. Um, so think about who in the Bible were dreamers. Well, a lot of the authors of Scripture were dreamers because um, they're kind of wired as visionaries. And um, but one of them we we get quite a bit of information about, and that's Joseph. Yeah. And Joseph was a dreamer. Um, and Joseph was an unwise dreamer because he shared his dreams with the wrong people in the wrong way at the wrong time. Yeah. And sometimes just because you're given a dream doesn't mean that you need to share the dream. Mm, that's good. Okay. Um, just because you've received something doesn't mean that everyone needs to know about the secret that God has shared with you. Yeah. And so um, if you're sh shown something uh, by the Lord, that doesn't mean that you need to go and trumpet it to the world, especially not out on Facebook and, and everywhere. You need to practice the principle of this. Let me just say it. Keep your pearls in your pocket. Keep your pearls in your pocket. Okay, so Joseph, okay, that's great. You had a, you had a dream that, you know, you, God's going to do something great with your life. That's awesome, okay? And maybe in the dream you saw, you know, all 11 of your other brothers, uh, like, bowing down mm -hmm. to you. Okay, that's probably one you want to keep to yourself, buddy. Probably not one you want to just go tell them. But, hey, he was young and dumb and said, hey guys, let me tell you about my dream I had last night. You guys yeah. were... And I think we've all been there before. Yeah, we share, know? we just, we get excited in the moment. And I can tell you, I have shared my dreams to people and and had them, they didn't know what to do with them. Right. I mean, think about it. It says, don't cast your pearls, your dreams, before swine. What's swine? That's pigs. Okay, do pigs have hands? No, they have hooves. So what's a pig going to do with a pearl? He's going to get a money. He can't even grab it. He can't pick it up. He can't value it. He can't inspect it. He can't, he can't hold that pearl of a dream. All he can do is trample it underfoot. And so you just have to recognize... Is your is this audience is this person ready to receive and are they prepared to receive that pearl and hold mm -hmm. it to give it the honor that it deserves? And I think that a few factors come in there, and that is first yeah. of all, um, you know, the timing of mm -hmm. when you want to share this. Are you trying? to share your dream with your wife who has two kids who she's feeding oatmeal to in the morning and making sure their sippy cups are taken care of and changing diapers and she's got a whole you know sink full of of dishes because she does not have the capacity to to hold your dream properly and even when she wants to the the um Mode of delivery. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying like the here and now, I've got to get this done. I've got to take care of this kid's butt. It's mm. stinking. Or I've got to, you know, put, I've got to put apple juice in this because my kid is having an absolute hissy fit. Right. Um, and so something that we've learned is just that 
Brandon, you know, he has tons of dreams, and I want to be the one that he wants to bring it to. I want to be the one that he um, automatically says, I want to go talk to Nicole about this. I want to be his best confidant. I want to be his best cheerleader. And I want to be the one who helps him birth his dreams. But there are times where life just happens. And so we've kind of come up with a whole idea of like, hey, babe, I'd really like to talk to you about this, he'll say to me. When do you think we can talk about it? And so and take notes because that took eleven years to get there. Okay? That is a, that's free. We're not even charging you for that. All right. So so so, so get that dreamers. I'm just going to mm -hmm. help you out. I'm going to help you avoid divorce court. Okay. <laughs> you say, hey babe, mm -hmm. you know there's something that is really important to me, and so this is called practicing restraint. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's something that's really important to me, and sorry, we are. Running out of juice there. Okay. So there's something really important to me, and I want to I want to share this. Yeah. Okay. When are you going to be at a place to where you um, you can give me your full attention, and you're not going to fall asleep on me? Right. Because that like breaks my heart. It does. Um, We've done that where he's trying to tell me a dream, and I literally have fallen asleep. It's not the best. It's not yeah. the best way to do things. So, you know? an and another thing too is like when you're about to launch, okay, into the dream telling, okay. There's the long version. There's the medium version. There's the short version, okay. And it's good to ask the person that you're about, okay, how much how much time do you think you can be with me, okay? <laughs> like, and if they're a thinker, so okay, so let me just kind of back up a little bit. Sam Chan says it this way, there are thinkers, there are organizers, and there are doers. We kind of opened up by talking about the Cubs and saying, so, okay, ownership, you know, the Theo Epsteins, they're the thinkers, okay? Then there's the organizers, that's your manager, your coaches, okay? And then there's the doers, okay? Um, and you've got to recognize capacity, okay? Rizzo playing first base for the Cubs, like, I can just imagine if Theo Epstein is coming to be like, hey, Rizzo, I got this logarithm about... You know, all this blah, 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 blah. And, and Rizzo's like, uh, is this going to help me hit a home run? Yeah. Like, he's yeah, just like, it. I just, if, unless it has to do with me playing first base, like, you do your front office thing, go talk to, you know, all your nerds up there, and like, you do you, let me do me. Um, and so just recognizing the wiring of your spouse. Okay, if you've got two thinkers, then you guys probably can be chatty Cathy's together and just dream together. Okay, and you know what? That's a different dynamic. But probably, you, you probably have married someone who's different from you. Yeah. Um, so you're a thinker. I'm a thinker, absolutely. And I'm more of a doer. Yeah. At this point in my life. I think yeah. before we had kids, I was more of an organizer. Mm -hmm. But now I'm more of a doer. So it's just what it is what it so, is. So what that does is, is when you're a thinker, you have like the capacity. You know, I, I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, it's like I'm a... 18 wheeler, you know, oil tanker, you know, and I've got like all these dreams. And so I'll just kind of be like, Hey, you know, I really want to process something with you. You know, how much do you think you can handle? Mm -hmm. You know, and she, she'll just look at me. And at this point, after 11 years of marriage, we've gotten honest enough to where she can look at me and say, honey, I think I can handle about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll give you my attention for 30 minutes. Okay. And so in volume terms, like, I think I've got about a bucket. You know, if you were to talk to me like while I was cooking dinner, I have a thimble. Okay, thimble. If you want to tell me something, it better be thimble size. Otherwise, right. I'm going to feel overwhelmed and unloved. So, I mean, you can, you can, this is, this is just. This is good stuff. You guys need to be taking notes on this. This is serious. And it, this is helping this is, somebody. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, um, so it also, I mean, think about this. So, telling someone your dream is similar to planting seeds in soil. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if you're gonna plant seeds in soil, what do you need to do the soil first? You plow it up. plow it up. You till it up, you make sure the soil is ready to receive the seed. And so if you want your dream, your pearls, uh, to be honored, to be received well, then you've gotta actually say, okay, I gotta plow up the soil a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. And so I've gotta prepare the soil mm -hmm. to be ready to receive the dream. That's okay. Good. And so I it's on me who's gonna sow the seed to actually prepare the soil of her heart 
so that her heart can get ready to receive. And now she has, you know, some of her own preparation to do as well because she loves me and she's, she realizes that one of my love languages is words of affirmation and for me to feel like I'm respected. And so she, she will give me her full attention, but she'll limit it. Um, and, and she's just honest with me and just kind of, you know, about five minutes before she's reaching her brim, she's just kind of like, I got, mm -hmm. I got about that more. Okay. Yeah. I love you. And what that Come does to a is point where you can, where you can stop. And so it forces me to be strategic about what I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll say this sometimes uh, it means that I need to process all of the other stuff with somebody else right. who's wired differently. Right. Um, yeah. And that's been that's been a huge thing. Um, it may not that may not be for everybody who's watching this, but but for those thinkers like me, you probably need a little bit of help. Yeah, I would just say that that was one of the other things is that um, before you share your dream with your with your um, with your spouse then you really got to think it through. Yeah. Um, you don't want to necessarily be the one who is just giving the 100-page volume, mm -hmm. um, and, but it might be a two or three or 400-page volume in the end. And so then you're reading this 100-page volume, and you're like, I haven't really thought about that, and I haven't really thought about that. So I would encourage you, like, think it through. Try to think it through as much as you can to the end, and then... Um, and then depending on how much your spouse can take, whether they're a thinker, an organizer, or a, or a doer, um, definitely give them that amount right. during that time and respect that time. Yeah, and, and, say, and think about what they're specifically good at. Like my wife has awesome, like on the ground wisdom. She just kind of knows what's going to work. Okay. And so I'll have this, Hey honey, what do you think about this? And I'll just, you know, she'd be like, uh, Maybe in 10 years, but not this week. That ain't going to fly. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, so that'll save me a ton of thinking time about that because it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. And so for me to actually do a little more thinking, strategic thinking about like, okay, what part of all the, the, all the things that I've been thinking about, what part can I honor my wife and her ability and, and can I cast that part to her and, and make it more of a conversation yeah. if at all possible? That's right. And then I would think the last part of that on how you're going to share this with your spouse is to come in understanding already that not every dream that you have is for you to accomplish. Mm, come on. And so that was something that we had to come to a conclusion of. I, I feel like the Lord gave me that, that sentence to you one day early in our marriage because you had all these huge dreams and I was like thinking like, there are some things that you're going to have the time and energy to do. Mm. And there are some things that it just didn't sound like that was really in your wheelhouse, mm. but that you were, that God was going to bring relationships into your life that you were going to share that dream mm. when it was going to catch fire in someone yeah. else's heart. So I'll say this. So, so not every, not every dream that you get are you supposed to do. Right. Sometimes you're just supposed to see it. And I think, Hey, if, if God shows you something, then it is for at least one purpose, and that is for you to pray about it. Pray. Pray about it. Pray. Think and say, God, if you're showing it to me, then I just say yes to that and amen, and may it come to pass if mm. it's a good and it's good. if it's a good dream. And then, and then don't assume just because he showed it to you that you're supposed to be the one to do it. Right. So follow up and ask the question and say, okay, that... Okay, I, I got this vision, so am I supposed to do that? Or is there somebody else? And I'm just, let me get a little bit more clarity before I just jump into action. Right, exactly. So, so, so those are good ways on how to share your dreams without overwhelming your spouse or your teammates or whoever else that you're working with on that. Um, and now I want to talk a little bit about, we want to talk a little bit about how to be that receiver. How to be the one who, um, who holds the dream of your spouse who helps um, champion that mm -hmm. in his or her life, and then how can we, um, as the other person, really help birth that? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think the first thing is is what we were talking about is when when your spouse comes to you and says like, "Hey, I want to really talk to you about this dream. Like, I I feel like this is what we're supposed to do." Um, is as a active listening. Yeah. And and if, what was that episode one? I think that was episode number two. We talked mm -hmm. about active listening. How do you actively listen to somebody and make them feel valued, make them feel 
loved. And so when they feel valued and feel loved, they're going to share more because mm -hmm. when you feel valued and feel loved, then you feel safe. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we don't throw out our, our deepest dreams when we don't feel safe. And yeah. so I, as, as Brandon's wife, want Brandon to, to know that this is a safe place. And so, especially when he's already said like, Hey babe, can we talk about something? And we've set up this time talk. Yes, we're going to talk about it as soon as the kids get done. I've already come into know that like I like to go to sleep at nine, ten o'clock at night. So I'm going to need some coffee. I'm going to need to be you know taken care of so that I can stay with you mentally. Um, and then I'm going to actively listen to you. And so I'm going to have eye contact. I'm going to ask clarifying questions. Um, I'm going to just. I'm going to keep pace with what you're saying for as long as I can. And then I'm going to be honest when I get to the point where I'm like, okay, I can't take any more, yeah. you know, but I want to come back to this because there's more I can tell. And so, um, so first thing is just active listening. Ask those clarifying questions, especially if you're an organizer, you see how these thinkers have all these things and you can kind of, you can kind of chunk them. Okay. Well, first, what do you think about doing it this way? Or, you know, if it, if it's, um, we want to, I don't know, start a church. That was one of our dreams, you know? Okay, well, okay, where do you think it's going to be? And how do you think we're going to get a um, team of, um, of volunteers to help us? And, and what does it look like personally for us to be pastors of a church or something, you know? And so there's all these different things that, that as, your, as the spouse, um, you can ask these clarifying questions and you're going to give them the opportunity to, um, really think more deeply about it. It's almost like you're and more pulling, realistically. It's like you're you're helping to pull the dream out of my yeah, heart, right? Um, and and through through cherishing that and 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 it really is a process. You know, we talk about the goal of relationship. Uh, we talk about this all the time. The goal of relationship is intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's that into me see and right. so I can say that you know one of the biggest times when I feel loved is um, is when whenever we have a time where I have she's prepared to receive and I'm prepared to share mm -hmm. um, and um, and it works out well because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm connecting with you and I'm asking you those questions right. to help you continue to push it out. Um, and then I would also say that the next thing you want to do is you want to say, you know what? That's awesome. How can I help you? Hmm. Ask that specific question. How, How can, can I help, help you see this dream come to pass? What can I do to be a part of it? Cause maybe you might be a, a, a really integral part of it. Like hmm. what if your, what if his dream or what if my dream was, I want to adopt a child hmm. and I will, He's going to be a huge part of that. <laughs> so yeah. um, how can I help? It could be something, you know, more separate where it's like you might have a dream to go do something that I'm not particularly interested in and I don't feel connected to actually take part in an active role, but how can I help you? Well, I'm going to need... Um, I'm going to need a couple business suits to go talk to these investors and I'm going to need, you know to take care of a few things. And so I can help you do those things. Right. Um, and then the, also, we can always help our spouse birth their dreams by praying for them. Mm -hmm. And so when Brandon, I've learned over the last 11 years of being married to him and 12 and a half being together, when Brandon comes to me with a dream, usually the first thing I need to do after we get done talking um, is, is take it to the Lord and just say, okay, God, my dreamer husband has got this, and if it's from you, open every door. And if it's not from you, or if it's for someone else that's yeah. going through him, bring that person Reveal into his that. life. Yeah. Reveal that to him so he doesn't just waste time and energy and resources going down the wrong way. Um, and so, and so, always following up um, and praying. And then also, just another point of of it is that. I don't know if, if you're like this, ladies, but I am such a realistic person. Um, yeah. Brandon just says that I'm like a lioness. Like, I'm going to be down on the ground, and I'm going to, like you said earlier, I can see how things might work or things might not work pretty quickly. Um, so, if anything, it takes more convincing of me that a dream is about to happen or a dream is doable. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I've really had to ask the Lord to change me is that 
my natural tendency is to be a dream killer, mm-hmm. is to be a dream squasher. And so if I'm um, operating out of my flesh, mm-hmm. then my natural tendency is to discourage him in his dreams, um, A, because it's inconvenient to me, um, B, because it might because my faith isn't high enough like his might be to be able to say like, yeah, we really can do that. We really can change this world. Um, or just because I'm not in a good mood, (laughs) um, you know, that happens. So, so be a dream catcher. Ask if you're not naturally dream catcher, like I'm not naturally a dream catcher, ask the Lord to change you, especially for your spouse. Um, I've asked, I've asked God to change my, initial forethoughts on when he says he has a dream because my initial thoughts on that are oh gosh and they used to be and now they're starting to shift to the point where it's like okay what's next and so um and as we've seen god do things through your dreams um in our family and we've seen him to be faithful my faith is continuing to build, and so I'm able to, to trust you more that your yeah. dreams aren't just these pipe dreams that are right. never going to happen, but are, are like, hey, you actually do have some yeah. something to it, yeah. you know? And I think, um, you know, Pastor Eddie went, I think, um, early on, put in a, a clarifying statement that was that's really important that said um, a a a vision without a plan is just a dream. Mm. And so I think a lot of times that's where, that's where I think we need to clarify the difference between dreams and a vision. Mm-hmm. And I think it becomes a vision when we have the, con- it's, it is a dream that then we have the conviction that says, this is a dream that I'm supposed to do mm-hmm. and carry through and I'm going to have enough conviction to connect with organizers and doers to help me create a plan so that that dream can become a reality. That's good. And so the planning process, and actually and it's meeting with the folks who really have their pulse on what's on the ground and what's doable. And, you know, I mean, if you're in business, it's what are the market opportunities? What's the market saying? Um, it's... It's just recognizing if you're if you're doing a nonprofit uh, an initiative and you have to, you you depend upon volunteers, then it's recognizing capacity of those volunteers, the timing, the dynamic. It's it's all of that, and so that's actually coming into a having a well-rounded dream team with all the different personality types mm-hmm. represented, mm-hmm. Um, and so that so that you're developing a plan that's going to work. For the analytical C personalities, uh, the, the the S personalities, the mm-hmm. steadies, the, yeah. and 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 you're also given a place for the for the high I people to right. to pump everybody up. But then you've got somebody at the helm of the ship saying, "All right, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it." Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just okay. it's that that is how teamwork makes the dream work. Um, yeah. So. I think that we probably need to stop at this point okay. because I don't want to belabor and go too far past um, everyone's capacity. Past your capacity. But next week, um, because we didn't get to it this week, we want to talk more about how to dream together as a couple and what do you do when your life seems to be going in the opposite direction from your dreams. And so what does that mean? I think um, Brandon in a couple of different sermons had an opportunity to kind of explain what it looks like when, when you are the arrow and you are getting pulled back mm-hmm. away from your dream from the bullseye mm-hmm. and what does that mean. And so next week we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk more about how to dream as a couple. We're going to give you some, from some specific ways to be able to engineer your years to be able to build upon precepts to get you to the goals that you have whether it's financial goals whether it's goals as a couple for your own relationship whether it's big goals for um, your city or your community your state the nation the world we want to show you how you can do that give you practical advice to be able to do that but we are so excited um just to have this opportunity to be with you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Um, again, if you um, 
if this if this blessed you in any way, if this was encouraging to you, we would really appreciate you to just like and share it on your page. We would love to get the word out. We're not trying to do this to um, to aggrandize ourselves, but just to say like we want to inspire passion for your priorities, whether that's in your faith, your family, or your future. Um, we're not doing it perfectly, but we're willing to to fall down in front of you and pick it up and, and be real on um, the areas that um, we've seen some success and the areas where we've really failed and how and how we've been able to turn around and get out of that. So thank you guys so much for being with us. We love you. Good night. All right. Peace.